Fun times. We All right, we are live. All right, hello everybody. You have Lisa and Ryan here today, and we're cramped we are, in our office. We're cramped in the office, yes, with four dogs. Um, but we're here today to discuss CBD, all about CBD, and really all about the endocannabinoid system and what it is, uh, why it's out of whack, how we get it back under control yeah. um, with CBD and a few other lifestyle things. Yeah. Um, so Ryan's going to go into the nitty gritty details, the science mm -hmm. behind the endocannabinoid system yeah. and then dig into our CBD and then we'll talk about uses, um, a lot of questions that I know I've received that um, we'll go through, and then we'll also be able to answer some questions as they come. But if you're going to ask questions, please make sure it pertains to CBD. Those are the ones that we're going to answer today. Awesome. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit about pets as well. Yeah. So endocannabinoid system is considered like a large mesh network. It is the largest network of receptors in our body. It's larger than our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system. So, this, so the endocannabinoid system has three real main components. There's receptors, there's uh, endocannabinoids, and there's enzymes. So we're going to talk a little bit about receptors because that's kind of really how everything works. The receptors act sort of as a lock and key and become the signaling center once uh, they are activated. So receptors for endocannabinoid system are found in both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. There are two types of cannabinoid receptors. There's cannabinoid type receptor one and type two. Now they're spread out throughout the body, but the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. So in the brain and the spinal cord, you're predominantly going to find CB1 receptors there. Now the peripheral nervous system is made up of basically all other organs of the body, all other tissues, your connective tissue, your muscle fibers, your other organs, your liver, your kidney, your pancreas, your spleen, uh, everywhere else in the body. Um, but it really, it, it's a large system. In that system, in the peripheral nervous system, you're going to find a mix of CB1 and CB2. So mostly CB2, but it's going to be a mix. And so those are the primary receptors. Now, the body naturally does produce what they call endocannabinoids. Endo meaning inside, and the cannabinoids are what we're talking about today. So endocannabinoids are produced by the body. There are two main endocannabinoids. Now, we will talk a little bit about how they get thrown out of whack, disrupted, and sort of not in enough high enough concentration. Um, and then, of course, there's enzymes. So the enzymes are responsible for a lot of heavy lifting. They are, the, they are what manufacture endocannabinoids. They're also what breaks down endocannabinoids. So we won't focus too much on the enzyme today. We're going to speak mostly on, I'd say, the endocannabinoid system, as well as um, ways to kind of balance it and restore homeostasis. And that's the word homeostasis kind of implies that there's a balance in the system, a natural balance. And that goes with everything mm -hmm. in our body. Mm -hmm. We always want to establish homeostasis and why so many things happen to our bodies is because they, they lose that homeostasis, they get off balance. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what, what causes the endocannabinoid system to have a dysfunction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, okay, center. well, sure, a lot of it's life. I mean, this goes with everything too, but it's lifestyle. I mean, it's it's stress, it's smoking, it's excess al alcohol, it's lack mm -hmm. of uh, movement or exercise, a poor diet. All these things, just as they can throw other um, of our bodily systems out of whack, sure. all these things can also throw our endocannabinoid system out of whack. Yeah. Um, what are some other things? Did I get to know? Yeah, I think you covered the big ones. You know, there, uh, you guys may have heard of things like endocrine disrupting chemicals, right? So things like phthalates. Uh, that's one that comes to mind for me. It's real common in like classic water bottles. Or BPA. BPA. Yes, and all, yeah, those, those things actually can really disrupt the normal endogenous production of your endocannabinoids. Those are two. Um, we talked about, like you said, you hit on the big ones, obesity, smoking, out, excess alcohol, toxins, exposure. You know, that that is really where most people get kind of sort of thrown out of whack. Now, it won't just be your endocannabinoid system. It's going to be basically your entire body system, which depending on the literature that you read and the studies you read, there's a lot of evidence now to suggest that the endocannab endocannabinoid system really is the connection the bridge between brain and body, between the central and the peripheral nervous system, the bridge now. That's really how they're, the, when I call it a mesh network, it's like you're bringing your different Wi-Fi signals together and kind of making sure they're all communicating well and in balance. That to me is is what the endocannabinoid system is responsible for. Right. And we work so hard to balance our other systems in our body to keep those in homeostasis, but most of us don't ever consider, nor do we know about 
the endocannabinoid system and that we have to treat that the same exact way. Yeah. Um, and again, that's with, you know, correcting those lifestyle factors as well as supplementing, supplementing with CBD, yeah. just like as we have to supplement with anything else. Um, so really, well, I was going to say that one thing that's interesting is you just said like many people aren't familiar with, and there's a good reason this wasn't discovered until the nineties. I mean, they've identified CBD. I'm not sure what year it was early on and THC I mean, in the sixties, but in the forties, I think maybe CBD somewhere around there, but the endocannabinoid system really wasn't discovered until like the early nineties. And, um, but since then, I mean, there's been, it's been a ton of literature, a ton of studies, a lot of, a lot of money is going into studying the endocannabinoid system and look, there's a drug approved on the market now uh, that treats primarily it's for FDA, but it's uh, for convulsions and seizures. Right. Yeah. Which is CBD, but just FDA approved. Yeah. Yeah. Where were you, what were you going to say? Uh, were... Well, I had, well, I said how we correct it. So I said the lifestyle factors as well oh, as yeah. implementation. Um, is there any, other I, think, I think there's some, there's some really solid evidence around uh, nutrition. So specifically on the gut, were you mm -hmm. going to talk about that at all? So if like you want to talk about it, the gut brain balance, yeah, because the microbiome, so fermented foods co comes in a big time here. Um, so the kimchi is the key for the, the probiotic based foods. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are super beneficial in restoring normal endogenous production of like your endocannabinoids. Right. And we really should be doing all of this yeah. with supplementing, supplementing to really help balance the, um, well, supplements the becomes part of it, right. You know, right, right um common uses um well other ways to restore hold on though so like exercise let's use exercise yeah. <laughs> sorry exercise is one where like you have to you have to talk about it because it does help restore the balance the homeostasis as a matter of fact the, the, that that concept of the runner's high for many years was believed to be some um um uh, 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 uh like an opioid uh thing where like uh what's it called uh the endorphins get kicked up and Anyway, now they're saying it's actually the um, endocannabinoids oh. are, that are regulating the runner's high and kind of giving you that second wind and, and balancing out your cellular, you know, messaging and chemical um, messaging. So that's kind of cool. I thought that was neat. Yeah. So we talked about nutrition. We talked about um, exercise. Of course, I think that balances it for sure. Healthy body, lean muscle, healthy body weight is Avoiding a big toxins. part of it. Avoiding toxins, right? Which Reducing. is impossible, but yeah. doing the best you can. I mean, sure. we, we don't live in a bubble, so. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're exposed, so you have to just work a little harder at it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, before, so before we go into talking about live good and the CBD and the oils and the tinctures, why don't we take a few questions? We want to do that now, or should we wait till the end and just go through all of them? Well, let's do a few like common uses okay. um, because I feel like that's probably a few questions out there. I know I I get that for somebody who's very unfamiliar with CBD, um, which is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, that we're here to to educate about it. But common uses, a big one is insomnia. Um, it really helps you sleep. It helps your body relax. Um, as, uh, anxiety, stress, uh, pain, pain is a big one. Um, great to help manage pain without using over-the-counter NSAIDs, which can also wreak havoc on your gut. So uh, that's a big one. Um, the dosing on the bottle, you know, is uh, two dropperfuls. Um, you know, it's really one to two times per day, you know, as, as you're, as you can tolerate, um, any side effects? Oh, we'll get into that. Yeah. Let's, let's, all right. So let's go into, let's go into the CBD okay. oil and then, we'll and then cause we're going to roll through that. That's really okay. going to become like a lot, I would say a lot of content. We're almost at 10 minutes after 12. Like we always say, we kind of try to like to try. keep these somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes long. So the live good or, uh, the live good CBD oil is a full spectrum tincture. So what does full spectrum mean? Full spectrum is the first step from a crude, like a like a raw crude hemp oil. So full spectrum is the least refined. So what does that mean? Why is that so beneficial? Well, it means that you're not going through a further refinement process, which is good. And the next step would be broad spectrum. And then they go all the way down to an isolate, which is basically just pure, pure CBD. Now, something to keep in mind as we're going through this, CBD itself actually does not interact with those receptors that we talked about. All of the other things do, and they create what's called an entourage effect. So we're going to learn about that now. So full spectrum has uh, the flavonoids, which are basically like antioxidants in the plant. You have the terpenes, which are what gives you the flavor and the aroma. Um, they're, they're, they're organic hydrocarbons that are, that are part of the essential oil of the plant. Like an easy example would be like the rind of a citrus, like something like a lemon, like if you kind of zested off that rind and smell and the aroma that you get, that mm. is 
that's kind of the essential oil. Those are the terpenes that are flaring out. So when you when you smell and you and you taste the terpenes, your body already starts to sort of respond to it. Terpenes are powerful, powerful stuff. It's big, it's a big part of what has been studied. And and if you guys want to really get into the weeds on this, Google some of the terpenes and learn about them. They're incredible. Mm -hmm. So having those in the full spectrum, they are not in the broad spectrum for the most part, but terpenes, flavonoids. And of course, you have the can, um, cannabidiol, which is CBD, CBD, cannabidiol. And then you have some of the other minor cannabinoids. So like you'll see CBC, CBG, CBN, there's, CBC, there's the CBD acids that somebody was just asking about. Now, they'll vary. They'll vary quite a bit based on the plant, based on the, the cultivation and the harvesting and all that. But that is, in essence, the benefit of full spectrum. Now, with that said, you are going to have some THC. Um, THC, of course, is the, the psychoactive part of the plant that, that can cause people to get high. And legal like requirement is up to 0.3% THC. So that potentially could fail you on a drug test. We need to make sure people are aware of that. People that undergo routine drug screening, it's important to know that full spectrum may contain up to 0.3% THC and potentially could cause an, a negative or a positive drug screen result. I mean, that's unfortunate, but that's the truth. Um, you know, if you actually look at the certificate of analysis, though, like some of the ones we were looking at, you'll see that the actual THC concentration, and this is a very good thing, is so low that it's not even detectable. And that's at the bottom of our website. Yeah. You want to review the certificates of analysis. Yeah, the certificate of analysis is is really an important piece there. So you'll know how much THC is in your product. And if it's lower than detect detectable limits, you will, I can't say definitively, but you're unlikely to, to test positive on a drug screen at that point. I mean, it's right. it's still stretch at 0 0.3, but the caution flag has to go out there. Yeah, it's always just like error on the side of caution. For sure. Something, you know, if you're in the law enforcement and you're routinely drug tested, mm -hmm. I mean, please. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be responsible for that. Um, yeah. But that's, I mean, the terpenes are really what, what like drives the, 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 the train. I know the miners do in the CBD and it's the, uh, so the entourage effect. The entourage effect is considered what is what like synergistic. So the sum is greater than the, 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 the whole, the sum is greater than all of the whole of the parts. Um, or no, sorry, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. I think that's <laughs> synergistic. So, uh, but that's really what it is. I mean, the whole idea of this entourage effect is that it, it kind of can, can, it, it sets up the mesh network to really be optimized uh, for homeostasis. Yeah. All the goal. Oh yeah, that's absolutely the goal. So let's talk about strength. Let's talk about dosing. Okay. Let's talk about side effects. Right. So we do have um, two flavors. So this is our peppermint. Um, both come in 750. Both come in 750 and 1500. The light's killing it. Yeah. Um, and then the, we also have the natural flavor. Same thing. 750, 1500. Yeah. Um, peppermint flavor obviously tastes like peppermint. And the natural flavor, it's not unflavored. It really just tastes natural. <laughs> like the the natural. Yeah. You, you can just taste it, but it's nothing yeah. like that has a significant flavor. Um, like I said, 750 and 1500. Why do we have two different doses? Um, we, when somebody is just starting out with off with a CBD, excuse me, um, we always recommend just starting low. Start with the 750, work your way up. Uh, the dosing is one dropper full. So uh, when you do open it up, you will see there's little uh, markers. So one milliliter is one dropper full. And sometimes you have to give it a few extra like, squeezes to get it up to the one milliliter. Um, but that is the dose. So I always say, start with the 750 if this is your first time using it and then increase as needed because um, it can be used multiple times a day. Is there an upper limit? No, no, there's really not. However, CBD will, can be considered biphasic, which means you could potentially get a different response at low dose as you would at a high dose, not just an amplified dose of what you got at low dose, something very different. Okay. Um, so yeah, you're right on the money though. You start with the 750. So that means 750, 750 milligrams in the whole bottle. And there's 30 milliliters in that bottle. It's one ounce. That is 25 milligrams per ml. All right. And there's 30 mls. So there's your that's your 750 milligrams. Um, start low, go slow. If you don't know what your dose is, you start low. You can even do a half a dropper full of the 750, and you you go slow. You tie trade up, and you can kind of find a sweet sweet spot. It is a daily dosing. It's recommended as a daily dosing regimen because again, you're trying to balance and create and optimize that mesh network. Um, and yeah, I think a bedtime dosing is probably ideal just to start with, um, or at least later in the day or a time when you're not really expected to do much because somnolence or sleepiness could set in. Um, Especially if you're new to, if you're new to it. CBD. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. 
And then the 1500 milligrams is just really twice the concentration. So it's 1,500 milligrams per bottle. That makes it 50 milligrams per milliliter. Obviously a bit greater bang for the buck, um, but uh, you, from, a, from a dose titration perspective, you probably would be better suited to start on the low end of 750 and work your way up. Right. Um, and I always recommend holding it under your tongue for 30 seconds before swallowing. That really helps maximize the absorption. Yes. Um, and then quicker as well. Um, so it's like before bed, you know, 30 minutes before bed, just hold it 30 seconds under your tongue. Yes. Um, Talk about the carrier. Carrier oil? Yeah, the MCT. MCT. MC, yeah. We use MCT oil as our carrier oil that is coconut based. Um, definitely have also had that question yep, a handful of times. Based. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then the pet? Yeah, we could do talk, talk about the pet. Yeah, of okay. course. So we do have a pet. We have as a pet. Well, well pets, 300. This mm -hmm. is chicken flavor. Um, my dogs love it. They take it straight. This is not this is open. They take it straight. Oh, one of them's open. They take it straight from the dropper because the pet dropper is plastic. So it's very nice that they can go straight from it. So, boy, let's see if they'll take some out. Dapper, you want a little drop? Dapper. Drop. Come here, boy. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. Come here. They, you can't see them, uh, but they take it. <laughs> they take it straight. There it is. They, <laughs> uh. they love it. And uh, but the other dog, the Brittany's been here. They don't like. The, I don't know why they don't What's take up, it Brady? straight from the dropper. So I just squirt a little bit of it on their food. I mean, maybe. Oh, okay. So I'm no. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys that I don't think that's a good idea. Straight from the dropper. Yeah, because you're you're introducing bacteria into the oh, product. Oh, okay, so. that's true. Oops. Yeah, I mean, we want to maintain cleanliness and you know, not sterility, but you want to keep a clean product and uh, as much as you can. So as much of the dogs enjoy it and it's convenient, especially, and I think actually that dropper on the pet is plastic. So that's yeah. a good thing that it won't, yeah, the other ones are glass, but um, yeah, so that's, that's beneficial for the pets too, because they're animals, they're mammals, just like us and our furry friends definitely can benefit from it if they're, they're shy with Right. Yeah. And a lot, I mean, same thing with the endocannabinoid system. So we don't have to go into detail about that, but a, a co common things for using it for dogs, um, let's just say hip dysplasia. So they have discomfort from that. Um, as they get older, I know with one of the Britneys in here, she wasn't sleeping right. um, while Anxious. we've been watching her. So she was getting up to go to the bathroom, needing to go out, but I started giving her CBD and she sleeps through the night, doesn't have any accidents. She's just sleeping sounder. Um, anxiety, um, separation anxiety. Huge one with dogs. We used to have a Ridgeback had major anxiety. I wish we had this pet CBD then. Um, car rides. Okay, sometimes I know one of ours is very, in, in a car ride, I don't know, it, they stand the whole time. They're not like relaxing. So it could just help them relax. Thunderstorms. Yeah. Um, fireworks. Fireworks. You know, all common things that we all kind of deal with with dogs. And yes, they're not going to hold it under their tongue, but that's fine. It's just, you know. Um, uh, but again, if you're not going to use the dropper, you can just put a few drops in their bowl or a, a dropper full in their bowl. And like the other two Britneys in here, I have to put a little bit of kibble in there and then drizzle it on. So whatever works for your dog. And one of the reasons why we say under the tongue is just that hopefully you get a little bit better absorption. You know, it's it's, it's difficult. The CBD is not very well absorbed. One of the reasons why MCT is a superior carrier is because it does increase the solubility and the absorption of CBD. Um, so, and it's a natural based carrier. So we wanted to go with something that we thought was gonna give the best the, the best absorption and and uh effectively okay. bioavailability yeah did you look at some questions yeah well um one thing though to keep in mind all right so what are some drug interactions what are some risks who should not start so mm -hmm. the cbd is metabolized by the liver um like i said the fda did approve a drug called epidiolex it was approved for convulsions and seizures and um you know you can go on and you can read a little bit about it so obviously you know that the literature supports the use of it and there's a lot of off-label uses for it. Um, obviously, we just went through a bunch of them. Uh, probably sleep, pain, mood, um, and chronic inflammation, probably being the, the big ones there. So as far as um, uh, who should not start the liver, liver disease is a problem. If you've got liver disease or you have been told that you have liver disease, um, yeah, definitely don't start unless you have your provider's permission. Um, you want to see your medical provider on that one. For sure. that. It's metabolized by the liver and it actually interacts with some of the enzymes in the liver. So there are certain medications, some medications that can interact, it can cause an interaction with. Basically what happens, CBD can, for the most part, slow down the metabolism of certain drugs. So some drugs mean it. So what that could mean is that it can increase the concentration of certain drugs. Um, that, that's an easy Google search. 
Um, not everything you read online is true, right? It's not, but it, you're mm -hmm. welcome to check with me and I can give you a, an official opinion on whether or not uh, that it does interact with a specific drug. Uh, that's really the main caution. That, I mean, other than that, it would just be like, test it out, see how you feel and, uh, and, and really go from there. It's a rather, I mean, it's a rather benign therapy. I mean, it doesn't. Um, just, yes, this will be recorded. This is being recorded and it'll be put on the YouTube channel. Yes. Oh, there's one. Subi is also good for children with autism and epileptic spasms. Okay. I think that was a statement. I agree. I agree with that. I know there's a lot of literature and a lot of studies supporting that. Okay. We went over the THC. Mm -hmm. What time before bed? 30 minutes before you're going to fall asleep. Or I, I take mine um, just 30 minutes before well, I get in bed. Time to max concentration in the blood is about two and a half to five hours. There's some variability. I'm glad you said that. If you're going to take it with food, take it with food every every night or every time you take it. If you're not, then take it on empty stomach. Be consistent with or without food. Obviously, with food is going to, is going to minimize the variability. Um, but if that's cool, if you can do it with food, that would be my suggestion. Stay with food. Two drops. Uh, again, a serving is a dropper full. There's uh, markers on it. One milliliter is a dropper. And each bottle is 30 milliliters. So that's 30 servings per bottle. Um, anytime you're going to use any, any supplement for children, please talk to your um, child's pediatrician before starting. Our pediatrician approves of the use. Okay, there's a lot on the children. But again, yeah, same yeah, thing, yeah. you know, anytime we're, we're discussing with children. For those of you that were asking about the, C uh, the certificate of analysis having an expiration, it should not have had an expiration date. That was a mistake. So they redid the certificate of analysis. There's another one going up on, on, on the website. So don't worry about that. The, the, the beyond use dating is two years, but they, they have stability beyond two years. We just put, we wanted to make sure that we stuck it with two years from the data manufacturer. Um. Well, you want to answer this? Somewhere? No, no, that's just having to do with THC. Unfortunately, we chose the full spectrum because we think it offers the most clinical benefit. Yeah. So you're always going to have the risk of THC. Um, there may be some other products in the future that we come out with that are more focused on, say, something like sleep, where we won't have any THC in it. But at this time, we don't. I've had this one before. Does it increase appetite? No, it it's actually may decrease no, yeah. appetite. No, one of one of the one of the side effects is it potentially causes a decrease in appetite. Um, Patrick, I would love to know if this helps your cat with its seizures. Please yeah. let us know. Yeah. Give us some feedback. Yeah, absolutely. All right. For uh, we guys, we're running 23 minutes after CBD 12. Is not water soluble. I did comment on 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 solubility and absorption. You are correct in that. Yeah. Okay. No, it's and that's one of the reasons why, like we said. Oh. Let me see. Can we scroll? Okay. So MCT coconut oil based. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it effective to rub the oil on your body? I mean, there's yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, it makes salves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It salves out of it for sure. I mean, you can you can use it for that. Yeah. I use the CBD for my vertigo and it's amazing. Great hearing. And vertigo is one frustrating yeah. thing to deal with because it's very hard to pinpoint what's going on. Can does, be anyway. Does it help with weight loss indirectly? Mm. I mean, it can it can lower your appetite, but it's also about keeping your body in homeostasis. So once everything is aligned in our body, things happen smoothly. <clears throat> All right. Yep. All right, guys. CBD can be taken any time of the day. Yes. Yep. 30 milliliter only at the moment. That's the only size we do have. There are a couple of drug interaction questions coming in. Send those. Yeah, you can send way. those to me. Um, or you can just check with your physician or your provider, medical provider. Or if you want, you can try Google search and just see what you come up with if you're very, very concerned. And uh, All right. Yeah. I, I think, think we covered um, everything. I don't it really is not addictive. Many, yeah, no. But, but um not addictive but you should titrate off slowly come down off of it slowly if you are going to discontinue it don't abruptly discontinue it that would not be a good idea we went over the use i feel like we're missing um, something like big i can't believe what it is 
Well, if, um, again, some of these questions are coming in right now that we've already answered. So maybe it looks like a lot of you jumped on late. I know the yeah. email was sent out late. So this will be recorded. Yeah. This is being, again, yeah. is being recorded and will be on our YouTube channel. So you guys can send um, your friends, family to listen to this. Yeah, it doesn't overdose. No, we did talk about not really having an upper limit. We come out with gummies. Yeah, gummies. I love gummies, but you know how hard it is to make a clean gummy? It's really tough. Really, really That's tough. just been the challenge at the moment, but yeah. not to say we're not working on we're it. We're working on it. I'll tell you that for sure. Um, all right, Heather, how do you do? And you mix it in a drink or a smoothie. Yes. Sometimes at nighttime, I put it in tea. I mean, it, you know, again, can't really taste it unless you have the... Um, a pharmacist would know better. <laughs> That's Ryan. <laughs> Not sure. Oh, you mean for probably for drug interactions? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. A hundred percent glad. To, thank you. I think that's probably what you mean. A pharmacist. I agree. I'm a Instead pharmacist. A and yeah, yeah. So any drug interaction question, probably right. right. Call your pharmacy. <laughs> Speak with your pharmacist, actually, because I'm not even really legally allowed to give you specific medical advice because you're not under my care. Um, great comment, Glenda. Love that. <laughs> nah. there's there's heather right on heather all right all right well i feel like we're missing something i really do i mean i want to dig more into the terpenes and get really more into it but honestly that would take I a long time i would take a long long time <laughs> a lot of them but like you said we'll cover we, yeah google them i think we covered the big points of it I, if you guys have any other questions you're certainly welcome to follow up with an email yeah we'll try to get As back always. to you all right well, it's a Monday, and I hope you guys have an awesome day and a very productive rest of your week. We'll see you back here same time next Monday. All right, get your CBD. Oh, we All didn't right. go over the prices. What? Oh, well, do you want to? Yeah, always. Oh, okay. Just give me get a, tear into it. Give me quick. a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, we don't have it memorized. Do you? Let me get rid of this real quick. There we go. No, the, I mean the, the prices can't be beat. That's what's crazy when you look at the quality. Um, and, and, you, and by the way, GVB Biopharma is the actual raw ingredient supplier for those of you who have wanted to look at their website and learn a little bit more. They do extensive testing on the raw ingredient. We do extensive testing on the raw ingredient we receive. Then we test our final product before you even get it. Um, and the state of Florida has pretty stringent rules on testing. So we're good there. Um, very, so, yeah. um, Go okay. Ahead. So the 750, uh, mil, the 750 milligram. $18 for members, 28 for yeah, retail. Crazy. I mean, if you you know other companies, I'm sure, especially if you've been using CBD, I mean, paying 100 to 150 to $200 yeah. for a single bottle. How are you supposed to use that on a routinely basis to actually yeah. balance your, improve your endocannabinoid right. system? That's more like you would use it sparingly because you don't want to run out of it and have to buy another $200 bottle of CBD oil again. Sure. And then the fifteen hundred, twenty six dollars for member members and thirty six for retail. Um, again, I mean, huge, huge savings. Um, and I lost the pet; it was right there. Um, and then the pet CBD again just comes in the three hundred milligrams, and that one is fourteen for members and twenty two for retail. So again, it allows you to take this every single day as you're supposed to do to help make a difference in your body. And finally, on the pet CBD, make sure you follow the weight dosing guidance oh, that is on the on the yeah. label, please. They, that is not that is not just a dropper full like it is I mean, like typically you would with the human. So please follow the weight based guidance. Yeah, good point. All right, all right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy your Monday, and we'll chat soon. See y'all. Take care.